welcome to the kernel series today let us see what are the physiological changes that are happening in pregnancy to the uterus as you all know uterus undergoes so many changes in pregnancy so before going to the changes let us see what is the normal non pregnant weight of the uterus it is as low as 60 grams okay less than 100 grams but in a term pregnancy it becomes as big as 1 kg almost 1000 grams okay that is the weight of the uterus which can accommodate only 5 to 10 ml in non pregnant uterus accommodates 500 to 1000 times more than that in a pregnant uterus how can all these things happen because of the physiological changes that are happening in the uterus firstly there is hypertrophy and hyperplasia mind it only uterus and cervix there is hypertrophy and hyperplasia there is no other organ that is having hypertrophy and hyperplasia breast and the boobs only hypertrophy not hyperplasia so first change is hypertrophy and hyperplasia so secondly there is stretching the stretching of muscles happen after 30 weeks you can see the fibers become very thin in in term pregnancy the muscle fibers are very thin because of stretching to accommodate the growing fetus the uterine fibers the muscle fibers become very Thin. So the uterine muscles undergo hypertrophy, hyperplasia, and stretching of the muscles. Okay, this is the muscular change. Coming to the arrangement of these muscles, they are arranged the outer longitudinal way at the fundus mostly, and the inner muscles are circular. Whereas coming to the intermediate layer, this is the most important and strongest muscle. Why? Because they are arranged in the crisscross way. You can see it is arranged like this, and here the blood vessels run in between. When the blood vessels run in between, and these muscles contract, the blood vessels get compressed, and the blood flow will reduce, and this will prevent from postpartum hemorrhage now coming to the vasculature as you all know in a non pregnant state uterus is mostly supplied by yes the uterine arteries but there is also the ovarian arteries which give a minimal amount of blood flow in a non pregnant state what happens in pregnancy the ovarian vessels also supply as equal to that of the uterine arteries because the demand is so much both uterine arteries and the ovarian arteries supply the equal amount of blood flow in pregnancy as it reaches near term because the demand is so high Now coming to the position of the uterus. Normally, till twelve weeks, uterus is into the pelvis. So until twelve weeks, it is a pelvic organ. After that, it becomes an abdominal organ. So once the uterus grows big, it goes to dextro rotation. Why? Because of the recto sigmoid on the left side, it will go for dextro rotation. If this is the uterus, uterus undergoes dextro rotation. What happens to the cervix? Cervix undergoes levo rotation. The uterus is dextro rotated, whereas the cervix is levo rotated. that is why whenever you examine a patient in term pregnancy you should always ask to empty the bladder and correct the dextro rotation before you start with your examination before concluding let me tell you the cervix becomes very soft and fragile in pregnancy due to increased blood flow and the hormones and this sign is called gudel sign These are all very important questions the weight of the uterus the growth of the uterus blood flow the arrangement of the muscles everything is very important for your mcqs i hope you understood well thank you